Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk Bourbon County podcast. The podcast with... where we talk about all things Bourbon County, right? Absolutely. But let's start off with our summer. How's Who your start? Who are you first off? My name is Denver Gonzalez. I'm Lauren Biddle. And you know, we've only been doing this for six months, Denver, right? Yeah, nothing too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> nothing too crazy. So what's been happening with you? Oh, uh, just the start of the summer. You know, kids are out. The sun is coming in. Yeah, I'm, I'm super happy with it. For me, like, my kids are out of school. We are off of a schedule right now. Right. Um, so we are just living our little farm life. Uh, yeah. We bought some chickens. Oh, yeah? Um, so they're loving that and taking care of that. Any names? Well, we gave them all, like, old lady names. And I don't want to <laughs> offend anybody, but... <laughs> Um, like my Mimi, her name was Dudley, um, oh. and we and we have a we have a Susan, we have <laughs> we have a Ruthie May, um, you know, um, and we'll actually have Holly, who we bought our chickens from, on here later talking about the farmers market. But oh great! Um, but yeah, I thought that was a really fun uh, thing to do with our chickens was to give them all yeah. little old lady names. <laughs> it's gonna and be I'm always like, come here, little girlies. Um, you won't believe what happened to me last night. What happened? I uh, was eating some yogurt at my house and also some eggs for my chickens because they're precious and because uh, that's what I have to eat in my house all the time these days. Um, anyway, so I was eating some yogurt and some eggs at my house and my daughter comes up to me and like bumps my elbow and then I shoved a spoon into my mouth and chipped oh, my tooth. Oh, Lord. And thank God for my sweet dentist, um, Dr. Mandy Thornberry. She, <laughs> she got me in the very next day and fixed up my tooth. Um, within 12 hours of having a chipped tooth. But the point of my story is like, thank goodness for our businesses in this community. They are so great and have such great customer service. Mandy, Mandy's wonderful. Dr. Thornberry is wonderful, but she's not the only one that would do something like that and get me in really quick. So I just want to give a shout out to Dr. Thornberry for <laughs> fixing my tooth within 12 hours. Yeah, so, that's a, that's a uh, good Especially start for, for this summer. podcast today. So that would be bad with me having a little chipped tooth. It'd be a little awkward. Uh, you know. <laughs> It would look like you got into a fight or something. Yeah, yeah. Who punched you, Lauren? <laughs> Good fight. <laughs> well, also, I want to talk about some of the community events we have coming up because, man, it is summer and uh, we are kicking off the summer with all these community events yeah, happening. Yeah, and it's gonna it's gonna be good because the kids are gonna have something to do, something to, you know. Families just love to get out and about in Bourbon County in the summer, which is a great thing. That's great. Um, and you know, it's I think it's the only time of the year where we all really have time to get out and about. So, right, right. Um, most recently we kicked off um, Fridays on Main on June seventh last week, um, and that? that was so great. We had games out in the streets. The street was closed down. All of our eateries and bars um, had various um, food menus and curated drink menus to go along with the theme. We did backyard barbecue theme. Oh, that's And it lively. was just a really good vibe downtown. So yeah. the goal with the Fridays on Main is to, to really start um, implementing this idea that we do have an opportunity for nightlife in the downtown right. district. And with that, you know, if we create this idea of a nightlife, we're going to create this idea that, oh, there's a place to go in our community. Absolutely. So um, there's, an, there's a reason for the madness for Fridays on Main, but at the same time, it's also just a really cool, fun thing to do right. for um, the community. The next one's July 12th, um, and then the other two are August 2nd, and the other is September, um, whatever the first Friday in September is. So from what time to what so time is it? 6 to 10. 6 to 10, okay. 6 so to 10. a couple hours. So we'll do a series um, of those. And, and that's going to be just so fun. Yeah, yeah. And um, hopefully people will just really start seeing their Main Street as a place to go for something to do on the weekends instead of going out of town. Exactly. So come on out, folks. Yeah. Every yeah. Friday? Every every first Friday, Friday. except for the, um, the July one is the second Friday. Okay. Okay. So, well, there you go. And then we also have... Um, Festival on 5th coming up. Normally, this would be a concert series. This year, we're only doing one um, simply because we're we lack of volunteers. Gotcha. <laughs> but we're trying to rebuild that back up. Um, so we're doing July 19th, Festival on 5th. I'm super excited because we're bringing back Sam L. Smith. He's always super, super popular uh, in Bourbon County. Yeah. He's from Montgomery County, but he's I think he's mostly going back and forth between like here and Nashville right now. Oh, really? <laughs> um, he's, a big, he's starting to, to get on the country scene a little bit. Um, he's probably about 20, 
24, 23 or 24, yeah. young kid. <laughs> I'm really excited to bring it's him back to Bourbon County. It's always a good time. County. Yeah. And our, um, our friends from Bourbon County um, Retrograde, which is a Bourbon County local band that a lot of people know, they're opening for it. So that's sponsored by Bluegrass Hearing Clinic every year, and they do an excellent job of being a really good community partner and helping out with that and getting that um, promoted. But July 19th is our festival on 5th. July 19th. Mm -hmm. Got it. And then our Chamber Gala is August, I think it's the 29th, and it, we're actually moving locations. Um, I'm super excited about this. Not that we don't love our friends at Mustard Seed Hill because they're amazing, but right. um, we're going to move it out to Stepping Stone Farm this year just because um, they created this really cool event space out there now, and we wanted to really highlight that. At any time, you know, somebody op offers a really neat event space, um, we really try to help promote that because right. event space is, is not super, um, there's not a lot of it in Bourbon County. Yeah, and it's very much appreciated. So anytime <laughs> we like, we offer a really cool event space, we want to make sure that we're promoting it to the community. So right. anyway, we're doing Chamber Awards out there. We're doing our first ever farm, truly farm to table dinner um, with vendors from um, Hopewell Bake Exchange, Hatmaker Homestead, Robin Ridge Farm. Those are all Chamber members. And um, our friends at Meals Made Easy over here next door are going to cater with our farmers. Oh, so that's awesome. That's yeah. I mean, that's truly just a Bourbon County meal, and you Absolutely. know, that's that's the goal of the the Chamber Awards is like right. let's celebrate Bourbon County in the most ultimate ultimate way possible. And by doing that, we're doing a Bourbon County meal. So yeah. I was very Speaking excited about roots. that. Right. Um, so yeah, we have that coming up. And last thing I want to talk about um, is the Legends of Bourbon County Festival. Um, Holy moly, we're getting so much interest on that from all over the nation. Um, October 12th and 13th here in downtown Paris. Uh, we're kicking off that festival on October 11th um, with a gala out at Hillendale Farm um, in their breeding barn, which is beautiful. If you've never been out to Hillendale Farm. No, I haven't. Oh my gosh, it's like driving into Narnia. Like, it, <laughs> oh, no it is like, it's like going into a whole nother world. Wow. Um, something that I, I don't think I realized as much when before getting this job as the chamber director is, um, it is, all horse farms are not alike. Um, yeah, I've noticed I, that. I thought <laughs> like own little world. they would all kind of be similar, right. but you go, every horse farm has its own little identity. And man, Hillendale at Alapa is beautiful, beautiful. There's stone everywhere. So wow, it's, so, it's really? beautiful. I highly recommend anybody that hasn't done a tour out there to go see it. All right, moving on to our next segment, top things affecting you the most in local government, Lauren. Yeah, it's a super important topic to talk about. You know, it might not be like the coolest of things to talk about, but I, I'm trying to make it to where it's informative. Well, least. this is pretty cool what we're going to talk about. Yeah. There's but, a buzz going on around yeah. about a entertainment district proposal. Yeah, the city commission brought that up probably, I would say, about a month ago for the first time. Um, about the idea of making the downtown into an entertainment district. What does that mean? Now, now whether or not that's going to happen is a whole different thing, but I at least okay. want to talk about it. Yeah. So an entertainment district is, for us, it'll probably, what I would, I would assume, would be but probably somewhere between starting 8th Street, down Main Street, between 4th Street. Um, that would cover all of our nightlife section in downtown. When I started my job probably about six years ago, we did not have the opportunity to do an entertainment district. We probably had one one opportunity for something that was a nightlife type of um, venue. And there wasn't really a lot of cars parked in the downtown district during that time. Mm -hmm. Something that you have to prove with an entertainment district is that your, night, your nightlife in your downtown area is, is vibrant. Um, so going along with that, what an entertainment district allows is during certain hours designated by the city that you're allowed to carry open containers between um, venues that offer alcohol. And then it allows you to carry it on the sidewalk. Um, so what that would, an example would be on a Thursday night between the hours of 6 p.m. and 11 p.m., you're allowed to carry your open container between um, Cannon Arrows and Rosenthorn, and it, it, what it does is it allows you to be able to patronize more than one business, and it encourages you to patronize more than one I business. I see. Okay. So it just makes it more of a fun vibe throughout the downtown area. Yeah. And what that's going to do is it's only going to encourage more people to want to come do business here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, there is a there it's there is a proposal for it. There's um, the chamber I think would highly support something like this because. Uh, we want to only drive more business down here. 
Um, the, the, the downtown has really been identified as a daytime traffic downtown, a tourism downtown, but I think that we really need to work towards identifying that nighttime traffic. At this point, we have five venues downtown that do nighttime offerings of, of going to have a beer or going to have a, a beverage somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's wonderful. That's great. That means right. that we're doing really, we're doing what we're supposed to do, but, um, we have to be able to, to prove that the downtown is being supported. So Fridays, of, like when we put in uh, initiatives like Fridays on Main, that's the goal with that is to truly just see downtown as it is. We're not bringing in any vendors um, for that, but truly just seeing downtown at its bare um, layout without extra people coming down and seeing if the downtown has the opportunity to be supported in the nighttime, in the, in the evening. Yeah. Um, so... We'll see. Um, hopefully, with the, throughout this this Fridays on Main series, um, we'll be able to to prove and support that. Yeah, that's only. I feel like that's gonna only like increase it and give it all more reasons. Yeah, and this is this is what chambers are for to be advocacy roots for things like this and initiatives that only help business operate better. So, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah, sure. I'm excited about that. Yeah. What's the next thing on our list? Um. So this is a. Um, very interesting topic. Occupational tax increase at the Is county. it interesting? Oh, no, I'll try to make it as interesting as possible. <laughs> I think so. I mean, people are, you know, it, it matters. Yeah, this is at the fiscal court level, which for people that don't know, the fiscal court is the county um, governing body. Right. Um, so the fiscal court voted last meeting, well, the meeting before last, excuse me, to increase the occupational tax from 0.75% to 1.25% which honestly, um, it's still low comparatively to other um, communities around us. But I just kind of want to give a breakdown of what that means. Yeah. From that 0.75% to 1.25%, there is a potential for the, city, for the county to gain an extra $2 million in the overall budget. Just with that small increase. Just with that small increase. Occupational tax is the number one driver of, um, of the overall budget in Bourbon County. So just to say um, how important that is, people think it's property tax that's the driver. And we have so much land in this community, right. but it's really the occupational tax that drives the budget. Oh, so by increasing it from 0.75 to 1.25%, we're gaining so much money. And what that means is it's not just like going into the, t the pockets of the government. It means better fire departments, better sheriff's department, um, better roads. So it goes um, back roads. into the city. It, well, this is the county that we're the looking county. at. The county. It goes back yes. into the county. Better, road, better county roads. Potentially better things to, for the chamber to do even in the future. Um, you know, that's just our budget's not guaranteed, but we are supported by the city and the county. So yeah. those, are, those are things that are going to only help the community do better in the future. Um, I do want to kind of note moving forward, though, the county has also to kind of um, gain compliance with occupational tax. They've hired an occupational tax administrator. And what the job um, of this person is, is to investigate any um, businesses that have either A, not been in compliance and not paid the occupational tax, they might not have even known to pay it because yeah. there's not been any oversight with it, or B, they've never even gotten an account to pay occupational taxes with the county. Oh, wow. So this yeah. person has, is going through over 9,600 accounts looking at the um, who hasn't paid, who doesn't even have an account, <laughs> who, who do we need to track down. Um, so that way people, people are in, in compliance and A, a in compliance and B, they're just aware of the fact that they're supposed to be paying a county occupational tax. Right. Um, and so far, I think that that person has really gained um, a lot of potential dollars for the county. Um, now, you know, you might have somebody come to you as your business and you might be really upset because you haven't paid in the last five years. But like in the end, like it's really what is good for the community. And I think they're trying to find some ways to like the, the fiscal court is trying to find some ways on how to balance that out and make this good for everybody. So like right. people aren't just shocked about the fact that they haven't paid their occupational tax in the last five years. But in the end, it's going to be good for the community if more people are on board and paying their occupational taxes. And the fact that they have somebody in place to um, oversee it is going to be better for the um, the growth of the community. Yeah, I see that as a positive. Oh, absolutely. You know, 
at first it's going to be some some growing pains, but in right. the end it's going to it's going to really help. Yeah, so. I mean if you're, you know, if you live here in the county or you work here in the county and you see improvements, you know, because of a small increase. I mean, it's going to only show how much the county has grown over the last 5 years. Yeah. And um it it's I don't it's it's crazy to me how like that is their number one um, form of budgeting for their budget, but they have they didn't have as much oversight for it. Um, or so it's good to that keep they have somebody it. in. Yeah, it's good that they have somebody in place now to really take care of it and yeah. make sure that the county is is keeping um, everything in line. So. Yeah, yeah, and they're um, I think they're giving them time to create an account or yeah. something that you mentioned. Yeah, so like they the, what has been proposed right now um, and. Well, by the time this gets out and gets recorded, they'll they'll find out um, in our fiscal court meeting tonight. But after, by the time this gets out and record for recording, that it'll already be decided. They're proposing an amnesty period. What that means is um, the amnesty period would allow people, um, businesses, uh, uh, to. I don't know how much how much time they're proposing, but say it's like a two month period um, to actually sign up and get an account. Um, so that way they're not having to pay, back pay the last five years. Yeah. And it just gives them a grace period to say, hey, we realize that you haven't gotten an account. You might not even know to, to get an account. But let's do this and make sure that, and do it right to make sure that you have the opportunity to be aware as yeah. a business to pay what you're supposed to pay. Yeah, I think that that'll be great. You know, it'll give some people to readjust, mm -hmm. um, you know, time to decide what they want to do. I think that's... Yeah. I think it's going to work out. Yeah, and that is the top things affecting you in local government. And welcome to our Bourbon County Impact segment. Um, I'm joined today by Holly Hatmaker. She is the president of the Paris Bourbon County Farmers Market. Our farmers market is so special in our community because it is one of the only one in the state that offers year-round um, an indoor farmers market, which is amazing. Um, the I think the effort and the work that you all put into the farmers market is amazing. Um, Let's talk about the farmer's market. It's open again for the summer, which means it's open in the outdoor area um, on Tuesday and Saturday. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Let's talk about the vendors. Yeah. So um, we kicked off uh, here in May with kind of our opening weekend. Um, we've had vendors setting up since April, but kind of like letting the community know like we're having a big celebration that we're open uh, we're getting ready we're having a night market here on um june the 21st yeah um, from six to nine awesome. so we'll have some too. different vendors we're gonna have a tie-dye workshop are you all doing a band again this year there'll be music there will be a tie-dye workshop there is going to be some special guests very tall special guests is it me it is, they might even be taller than you. Okay. Um, so it's going to be a really fun from, night for the from entire From a specific family. place that we like? Any specific place that we like? The tall person? Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. No, it's a surprise. Oh, well, I was just thinking it might be like a UK basketball player. It, yeah, no, taller than a UK basketball player. Okay. Oh, wow. Cool. Okay. It's yeah. a really tall I'm person. I'm very intrigued. Yes. <laughs> so it'll be a great night for the entire family. We're kind of, so that'd be like right as you kick off for summer, the official summer. And so it'll be... Um, kind of a luau theme, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Do you That's guys so get, fun. Yeah, do you guys get a lot of engagement when it's an outdoor event or like in these uh, night market events? Yeah, and so actually the, the the people that come to a night market is kind of completely different customer base than oh, really? you see on a Saturday. Um, you kind of have, it's really two different people that come um, those different times. Um, you know, the, sat the Friday market is a little more, um, you know, there's music and things going on and it's kind of more of like a... To enjoy the vibe. Yeah, the area, it's more of a vibe. Um, yeah. There's some usually some different craft vendors and things that you might not see on a Saturday. So two completely <laughs> different uh, customer bases that come on those. Okay. What kind of vendors do you guys have uh, during the uh, outdoor event? So we actually, we've got a lot of new vendors coming out this year. Um, we've got um, the Hoop House that um, has flowers and we've got a couple new vegetable um, vendors and so we're really excited about some of the new um, actually younger crowd that there's we have. a lot of buzz going on yeah. with with the farming community yeah and of course Hopewell and Cafe Marco um, are there as well and so yeah we've had a, a really strong presence here this uh, Saturday markets I think something that your your old board has done really good at is um, encouraging 
um, healthy options for everybody and encouraging people to use local resources and shopping local. Talk about how uh, some of the things you all have put in place. Well, this past Saturday, we had our first pop club for kids, which is stands for Power of Produce. And so every Saturday um, in June, July, and August will be for kids. And so they'll get to come and try healthy options, learn about healthy foods, and then they get money to go and spend with the vendors. My kids love that last That's year. That's awesome. That was so fun. That sounds so um, And so much we fun. have that going on. And then we're st we the kickoff for um, the Senior and WIC program has started. And so um, from the health department or the Bourbon Senior Center, they get dollars to spend with the farmer's market. And our farmer's market also participates in what's called double dollars. And so if you have a senior card and you come to our market, we will actually double that money for you. Wow. And so your card has $50 on it. We give you 50 more so that's a hundred dollars worth of fresh fruits and vegetables I bet through that's the season. a huge help for the community yes too. yes and so that's available they're now through they get to spend it through like october um so they've got plenty of time to get all of the produce you know you get into fall and you get more sweet potatoes and winter squash and things that they can actually carry over into the winter that mm -hmm. store well mm -hmm. um so that's going on in the WIC program as well that they can come out and get fresh fruits and vegetables for their family. And what is classified as a senior in Bourbon County? Um, I, I think it's 65? 65 and over. That's what I thought. I thought it was the 65, uh, like the Medicare age. And it, it's through the Bourbon um, Senior Center is where you get your card. Mm -hmm. um, they might still have some cards available, I'm not sure. Um, but you just get it through there. It's a, it looks like a debit card. Yeah, and what we, an amazing program We just scan it with our phones and they're ready to go. That's so sweet. What a, what a great opportunity. And then also you are having a lot of local restaurants, I've noticed, utilize your all's vendors at the farmer's market as well. Yeah, we've got uh, some great partnerships that are going on uh, with restaurants and, and different events here in town that uh, help just help partner and showcase the local uh, fruits, vegetables, um, things that are going on and being produced in our county. Can you tell us about the youth farmers and, and the, you know, the young population of farmers in the community? Are they uh, helping or being involved in the farmer's market as so well? So nationwide, the, the, at, the age of the average farmer is pretty high, mm -hmm. but actually here in, in Bourbon County, there is a lot more of a younger generation of farmers. Um, actually, a lot of our really active um, members or vendors are, you know, within that, uh, you know, 30 to 40 range um, okay. that are coming out and being a part and also bringing their families as part of it. You know, if you come on Saturdays, you see my entire family. Yeah. My kids are there um, helping us. My, my son started a chocolate business over the weekend. Oh, that's cool. um, one of our new vendors, Hoop House, they bring their kids. And so it's very much um, the farming in our community is very family oriented and really coming on to a younger generation, which is really great of helping to teach, um, you know, people in our community about foods, about um, just buying local meats and things that have a direct impact on our community, not, you know, some store somewhere else. That's huge. And like, I, th I feel like that you all have done a really good job at creating that experience factor with like the agritourism and coming and shopping at your local farmer's market. And that, I think that's helped um, the farming idea evolve to make it more of an experience. Yeah, you know, the, in this day, like every everybody wants an experience. They mm -hmm. want to feel a part of something. Um, and so, you know, we've got some really great, um, you know, agriculture, agritourism in our county. Uh, Middle Springs just had a great weekend. Amazing. Stepping Stone. Um, we've got some big names, you know, that are really getting out in the agriculture community. Both of those also ran by young farming families. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, thank you for joining no us. No problem. Appreciate thank it. you for thank having you. us. Thanks for bringing light to uh, fresh, local um, fruits, vegetables, meats, everything in our county. Awesome. Absolutely. And welcome to our three questions in three minutes segment, which is our local small business feature. Um, we're joined today by Ricky Rose, which is, she's the owner. She's the Rose of Rose and Thorn Pub. So Correct. one of two yeah. owners of yeah. Rose and Thorn yeah. Pub. Um, I want to talk to you about business. How's it been going? Uh, it's been great. I can't complain. We're doing exactly what we set out to do, providing a public house for the town. Awesome. So I do want to like kind of date, date you a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you opened during the pandemic. You were one of the first businesses to offer evening hours in the downtown district, which I commend you very much for. How has that evolved over time? 
Well, um, we, I mean, we started out, of course, masked and limited in our capacity and everything. Um, but that didn't stop people. People did not stop drinking during the pandemic. So, you know, and we offered... <laughs> I think they only drank more. Yeah. <laughs> but we offered um, good, healthy food and an escape from your home in a safe environment. And so that, that really was nice to have a place for people to come and go and feel safe and comfortable. And then, you know, once the mask mandate was lifted and stuff, things just kind of grew from there. We started doing some parties and bourbon dinners and um, trivia nights and stuff like that and it just we've just kind of grown over time yeah and I, I i really commend you all over time they've you've all done a really good job at like keeping it creative giving your plates like really creative and interesting and unique mm -hmm. uh, options talk about sally and kind of like what she does where does she, she's the mastermind of the kitchen she's the mastermind of the kitchen um she was unable to make it here today but she uh yeah she's run kitchens on and off since she was like 16 years old and wow. um she just, she's got this creative palette of mixing um, sweet and savory and salty. And she comes up with things that people are like, I don't know about that. Like um, we've got a ham sandwich called the Smacky Ham. It's named after our friend's dog. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's ham and honey mayo and jalapenos. And it sounds so weird. And I would tell everybody, good. just trust me and try it. And, and you just like, you can watch Sally calls it the inner beast. You can watch them as they're eating it. They're just growling inside. It's so good. And then you go home and dream about it, and you have to come back and get more. Well, I got to yeah. try it. It sounds, it sounds delicious. It is. <laughs> yeah, it is. one of my favorite things there, which I don't like anywhere else, is the jalapeno margarita. Jalapeno margarita. And I do not like a spicy margarita anywhere else, but her, your all spicy margarita is like the perfect blend of like mm. sweet and savory. So mm. That's great. Um, yeah. Ricky, thanks for, having, for coming on today. We really yeah. appreciate you. Anything Absolutely. else that you want to talk about before we, go, before we let you go? No, just come and see us. We're open Wednesday through Saturday from uh, 5 p.m. to 11-ish p.m. Um, Sometimes we, later. Yeah. <laughs> we do trivia on Thursday nights. Um, follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Um, all of our events will come out there. If you come see us, you leave us your email. We'll send you a newsletter once a month. Awesome. Yep. Thanks, Sounds Ricky. Great. Thank you. And welcome to our monthly sponsored segment. This is Let's Talk Bluegrass Federal. Uh, we're joined by President and CEO Shanda Smith. Welcome to the podcast. I've been begging you to come on for months. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate having you. Um, I want to talk about like the implementation of becoming a community-minded bank. What does that look like for Bluegrass Federal? So at Bluegrass Federal, we um, are different as a community bank because we are mutually owned. Okay. Rather than having stockholders, the people that own us are the depositors. So every deposit that our um, customers make, we lend back out into the community. Additionally, um, we have funds that we are putting out into the community for um, community improvement and betterment. Okay, so what, in Shanda's mind, in the minds of everybody that works here, what is, what is that mission? What's, what, what are you putting out into the community? Um, so it's dollars, of course. Well, yes. And and as well as volunteering. Oh yeah, Ab absolutely. Ab we've been seeing you guys everywhere. Yes, yes. So um, all of the employees are involved. Last year we did Festival on Fifth. Um, this year we took it a little bit differently. We actually sponsored Art Walk for the first time. Um, we were the presenting sponsor for that, and we're doing First Fridays now. Um, do Gosh, if I listed them all off. Yeah, but it, still, like, it's good to talk about like the the idea of seeing your employees in the community and putting the dollars where the community like knows that you're here, yes. right? Yes. Is that yes. the intention? That's our intention. Yes, that's our intention um, with everything. What boards we sit on, um, what we spend our dollars on, what we're giving back to. We want our depositors to feel good about where they're putting their money. Um, so, you know, if your family were to open up a large CD, mm -hmm. we would then turn around and lend that out to a business on Main Street as a startup or as, you know, maybe they want to purchase a building now. Okay. So it's all about making uh, Bourbon County grow. And have you seen, has that worked? It's worked, yes. Yes. That's good. I'm very, I'm very pleased with it. Um, I can't say enough about our employees. Our, my employees are fantastic. Um, they, they give their own time to put back into this. 
just this past Friday for Festival on 5th. I had people there. Friday's on Maine. Friday's on Maine. What's this past Friday? <laughs> we have too many events we in do. the summer. And we I've talked about that earlier in this in this podcast. But we have so many events in the we summer. We do, we do. But the first Friday's on Maine, um, they stayed on a Friday night until ten o'clock. Um, when we got it all done. So. Yeah, and they talked to everybody and they were out and about and mm-hmm. I think that seeing um giving a, a face to a name, knowing that like Tyler Duncan is what he looks like and going to him and being like, oh yeah, I met you at that one event. Mm-hmm. Like that's super important, right? Mm-hmm. As a, as an, a, as an organization. Absolutely. We want to be as accessible to the community as we possibly can. There's something about being able to pick up the phone and say, hey, can I talk to Tyler on the phone? Or can I talk to Shanda on the phone and knowing who you're talking to? Yes. There's yes. so much value in that. Another organization that you became very implemented in early on was the building of Secretary Park. Like, I know that that took a lot of guts and effort to be like one of the first organizations to sign on to that. What made, what, what made Shanda tick about that? What made you want to be like, yes, this is something we need to be a part of? Well, I think it's a huge part of Bourbon County. Everybody is familiar with Secretariat. Um, we all know that we, he came here to live out his career. And when the idea was um, presented to me, mm-hmm. I thought, absolutely, yes. This would be an excellent thing because it was all private dollars that mm-hmm. went into that. So I thought it would be an excellent thing for us to partner on. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, with the park just right up here um, on the street, I see people there all the time. At lunchtime, um, absolutely taking a break. I've seen, and they come um, from all over the United States. They do, they do, and um, just the field trips that mm-hmm. even the schools have taken mm-hmm. to come see and learn about. As the plaques, of course, have the history. Mm-hmm. A lot of people may not know beginning to end. So yes, we absolutely wanted to be a part of that. Um, and you all, you know, made a major donation. So not only did that did that happen, you all made this major donation. I really like to commend you guys for be, taking the fundraising effort in your hands and being like, let's do some match dollars and let's do this, let's let's promote and stuff like that. Why do you do that part as well? Um, we've done that on several projects, I'll tell you. Um, for instance, a couple of years ago, not mm-hmm. just Secretariat, mm-hmm. but there was um, major flooding in Carlisle. Yeah. So one of the things um, I thought about when that happened, because it was so sudden um, and it flooded Main Street, a lot of those um, residents that lived on Main Street in Carlisle, they were renters. And um, so how were they gonna recover for that, mm-hmm. from that? And we service Nicholas County as well. Mm-hmm. So my thoughts were, let's do a matching donation from the community, one community in tangent helping another. Yeah, absolutely. And um, that uh, that we raised about fifteen thousand dollars for. We did. Um, we gave seven hundred and seven. I'm sorry, seven thousand five hundred, and then we matched the rest of it to to get the whole community to be embraced. What a wonderful initiative. I mean, I think that's a good way to also get things out there for the community. Like this bank's <clears throat> willing to match whatever if you donate to this. So. Well, and I'll tell you, my new my newest thing, um, there's a place called Warrior's Ridge. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've heard about it, but it is mm-hmm. um, something that is now geared towards veterans. Mm-hmm. And what this organization does is they seek out veterans across the country. A lot of these veterans um, have, they struggle with PTSD. Mm-hmm. They're homeless. Um, you know, they're in various stages of their lives. And you wouldn't believe the lack of resources that that group has. Mm -hmm. So um, what they've done is they now bring these veterans back. They find as many as they can in one platoon. They bring them to the farm from Thursday to Monday, put them all back together, um, help them if they're struggling with mental health, but basically just reuniting it. Yeah. So um, that's something that once I found out about it, I actually have an employee here. It's her nephew that founded it. Mm -hmm. And um, we're really passionate about that. How, what an amazing initiative. And I know that, you know, different services, especially in Kentucky are not, there's not a lot of services for veterans. So there's not. What, what a great initiative. There's not. And, and the dollars that it needs, you know, for $300, you can support a veteran to have this week at the farm. That's yeah. just amazing to me. Yeah, absolutely. 
And I also heard recently about your internship partnership that you have with Paris Schools. Tell me a little bit about that. How, how has it made a positive impact on your business? So, um, wow, is all I can <laughs> say about that. The, yeah. the, the kids that we have gotten from Paris High School that actually work for us are just simply extraordinary individuals. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I think you hear so many things about the youth of today and and the negative things, but I can tell you firsthand, the youth that are coming from the school and working for me are just phenomenal people. Mm -hmm. um, currently, we have um, Jose, and Jose's been You brag with us. on him all the time, I love, I could not say <laughs> enough about Jose. Yeah. Um, he is an amazing person, he mm -hmm. really is. And I'll tell you the hardest thing is that you get so attached to these kids, or we do, and he's gonna be going off to college yeah. in August. Yeah. And he's been with us now since he was a junior in high school. Um, and I, just the partnership that we have, the value that he adds to the business, um, he's just an amazing young man. So yes, I'm very excited. Um, we have another child coming in. Well, they're not really children. They're young I adults. Think, yeah, yeah. But I still think of them. At my age, they could... I'll call my youth leadership group kids. I'm like, the kids are coming. The kind of, kids. Yeah. Yes, yes, the kids. Um, but at Paris High School, they do an amazing job. And the kids that we have in this community, they are such good people. Well, I think there's something to, to be said about organizations like yours that are um, implementing the kids into the community to help develop our local workforce because you know we're not growing super quickly in this community so being intentional about getting the kids ingrained in this community um, mm -hmm. because that that is our future workforce is I think super important absolutely one of my new goals now um, with Jose when he's gonna go off to college gonna go away um, we're gonna work on getting him a job at a bank close to campus because I don't want him to give up the mm -hmm. professional experience that he's gotten and just let him explore that and see where it takes him. Yeah, absolutely. What a what a great opportunity for him and and other kids that you're going you're going to have in the future. Yes. We love our kids. We love our Paris High School kids. Um anything else that you want to talk about? Home loans, anything that's going on? What are the rates like right now? I'm sure everybody wants to know about that. Rates, rates are a little higher than they were a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Um but deposit rates are higher now as well. So, um Definitely, though, if you're if you're in the market for a loan, absolutely look us up. Absolutely. Well, that is our Let's Talk Bluegrass Federal segment. We'll see you next time. All right, now we're moving on to our next segment, this segment from the Chamber. Woo woo. Lauren, how has the Chamber done this past year? So yeah, we operate on a fiscal year, and what that means is it's July 1 to the following June 30th, um, and that's how a lot of local governments operate as well. So we operate on the same as local governments because we are funded by local governments as well. Of course. Um, so I wanted to talk about you know how we've grown um, and what we've done to kind of implement some more things into the community with that money. Right. Um, since last year, we've had a 12% increase in our overall budget. Um, now we've been on a contract with our um, friends at Retail Strategies for the last three years, which has given us a 40% boost in. Um, in our overall budget each year, not a 40%, $40,000 boost in oh, our okay. overall budget okay. every year. Um, but not counting that because that contract ended, so that was not gonna be funds that we were gonna be having. Um, with the overall budget, we have seen a 12% increase just in funds. So that that seems promising. I think the community as a whole is seeing, um, even with inflation, is seeing um, a boost in the economy. Businesses are seeing a boost in, their, in supporting their businesses. So, uh, you know, the chamber is also seeing it. You know, with inflation, though, that does affect the, the overall budget. So, you know, it's not, we're not seeing um, as much money in the bank or anything like that. We are, however, we are seeing um, an increase in the overall budget. Um, but something to kind of note with that is the support for the chamber has gone up very significantly. Um, we saw a 30% increase in what we're calling fundraising and promotional events. Um, so anything that we had to raise over the last year, um, we saw a 30% increase. So it's gone from 
um, like thirty thousand dollars, or sorry, forty five thousand dollars to like sixty five thousand dollars. So that's a that's an amazing increase. Yeah, that's, um, that that's just shows yeah. the support of um, local businesses or local the local community into the chamber has gone up significantly. So um, more money is going back into the community. Some initiatives that we've implemented over the last year is one this podcast. Um, yeah. we literally <laughs> I literally came back from my um, annual training that I go to in Arizona and I was like let's do a podcast <laughs> and next thing you know the following month we started it so yeah. here you guys go um, we've also implemented um, a TikTok channel um, we put more money into social media advertising um, that has gone that has gotten us some really good followings um, it's gotten really good viewership um, we're into the tens of thousands in viewers with that versus you know just a couple thousand views on videos so that's really good that we started doing that and um, we uh, have implemented the Fridays on Main downtown event series um, I was the chamber was a part of the Secretariat Park implementation over the last year um, you know that's not as, that's not money out of the chamber's budget but the fact that um, let's look at Secretariat Park as like an economic boom um, you know, we know that 12,000 visitors go out to Claiborne Farm every year to see the Secretariat's grave. You know, ne not necessarily just for Secretariat, but he still holds a very um, good popularity, yeah. um, even 34 years after his death. Um, but so a lot of people go to the Secretariat out at Claiborne Farm every year. So we know that 12,000 people go out there. Why not try to like get a good portion of those people to come downtown and support the downtown area? Absolutely. That has actually been an economic impl implementation that has really, really worked. So mm. that's the reason for Secretary at Park um, and our reason reasoning for serving on that committee. Uh, another committee that um, I have been so fortunate to chair has been the Legends of Bourbon County Festival Committee. Um, our first year doing that was with Secretary at Park. Um, our legends in Bourbon County is our th are our thoroughbreds. Um, they're our little superheroes. So um, we uh, we developed the Legends of Bourbon County Thoroughbred Festival, and um, and so we'll go into our second year this year with Curlin. Um, but you know, again, we want to start identifying events and bringing vendors to the downtown area uh, to really identify the downtown area as a super exciting gathering space and and uh, bringing people to the community. So Legends of Bourbon County was kind of the, one of the answers to that. Uh, the horse industry, um, people who love the horse industry have a lot of extra income. They will spend it and they will um, bring their friends with them. So all three things that we like. Perfect. Um, so those are some initiatives that we took part in. Um, our membership increased by 11% last year. We went from 205 to 228. Um, 29 excuse me 29 229 over the last um, year so um, that just shows that business more businesses are seeing you know what our mission is is to promote and champion the overall community of Bourbon County um, so more people are seeing that we're doing that and implementing that and I really want to get membership as a way like members our members on board of seeing like this is what you're doing to help the community instead of what can you do for my business and in the end that rises us all up and not just rising YZ Media up, you know what I mean? Right, right. It, it only helps all of us to do these implementations of various initiatives instead of just saying, hey, I'm going to help this one business and advertise for them. I'm going to, the chamber is going to do an implementation that helps everybody do better. Absolutely. Um, so also we have like 46 individuals received leadership training that um, includes people from our board um, for Leadership Bourbon County, which is in its third year right now. Um, youth leadership, the youth leadership program, and our partnership program, which is Leadership Central Kentucky. So 46 individuals because of the chamber um, and our budget received leadership training. Um, and then we had some awesome recognitions in 2024 that I kind of want to note on as well. Um, one of the, probably one of the most exciting things that I've always wanted to be mentioned in is Southern Living. Um, <laughs> yeah. We were the number three most, small, most charming small town in Kentucky in Southern Living this year. So I was really excited to have that mention in, in, in the magazine and, um, and, and, on a, on a national level. People love Southern Living and Southern Living is kind of like the magazine that you think of when you're like, oh, what's 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 the coolest Southern place to go to? Right, Southern, right. You go to Southern Living to kind of look at that. Um, so yeah, Southern Living. Um, another thing is Secretariat Park Grand Opening was a huge success. Um, we had all, people from all over the nation come see Secretariat Park Grand Opening. Um, and we were also mentioned on several local and national 
um, media outlets because last year was Secretariat's uh, 50th anniversary of his Triple Crown winnings. So it was a really good year to open Secretariat Park. So that was relevant. The opening of Secretary Park was relevant to that. And so it was featured on all sorts of media. Um, and then another thing was, oh, um, this is something that like I noticed very recently. I was, um, I was chosen as a woman to watch on ABC 36 Let's Talk Bourbon County. So there any go. sort of media yeah. is good media, right? <laughs> right. Um, it has nothing to do with like, hey, Lauren Biddle is a woman to watch. But <laughs> right. like, you know, any sort of recognition that we can get in the community and getting our name out there is any is yeah, awesome. It's uplifting. Like, too. Anytime I'm, um, you want to come on my podcast? Yes. Any, you want to come on my show? Yes. Right. I, I will talk about Paris and Bourbon County all day, every day. So. <laughs> There's that one. Um, I do want to kind of go over our social media growth over the last year as well. Um, we have 4,185 followers on Facebook. That's a growth of over 700 followers from last year. Um, 833 on Instagram. And we implemented TikTok in February, I feel like. And we have 352. Okay. So it's grown pretty well. Yeah. Um, I do want to kind of go over really quick our top supporters for this year as well. Uh, Bluegrass Federal, Traditional Bank, Stockyards Bank, Claiborne Farm, CMWA, Anytime Fitness, Bourbon Community Hospital, Hinkle Contracting, and Hunt Brothers and Hunt Advantage Group. Um, and a special thank you to the City uh, of Paris and the Bourbon County Fiscal Court because without these donors and supporters, literally we could not operate and have the growth that we've had um, over the last six years. So. It's been a busy year. <laughs> it's been a busy year. Um, I do like going over and kind of reviewing the year to see what yeah. we've done. Um, but I think that's important to kind of, I think, I think the word transparency is a buzzword that's a little overused, but it yeah. is important to be transparent to talk about like, here's how we've affected the community over the last yeah. year. So that's, that's my goal is to make sure that we, everybody knows, especially our members, what we've done and how we've implemented it. Yeah. And that the chamber of commerce has been working for the community. That's the goal. Yeah. That is the goal. So. All right. That was the, from the chamber segment. What a great show it's been. Yeah, yeah. It went by with a lot of great topics. We, you know, I don't know that I intentionally did it, but uh, we talked a lot about, you know, making sure entertainment, supporting local, nightlife, yeah. trying to create a vibe in the community. And, you know, it's all relevant. So I'm super excited that, like, people were able to just kind of talk about that, note on that, and talk about their experiences with it, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think there's one more notable thing that we can mention yeah, before we sign off. I mean, everybody's favorite summer event, right? Yeah. Um, the Bourbon County Fair is coming up June 25th through, or June 23rd through June 29th in, at the Bourbon County Fairgrounds. Um, super exciting because yeah. everybody loves the fair and it's probably one of the most visited events in Bourbon County of the year. Yeah. So. There really is a lot going on here in Bourbon County this summer. Do you bring your kids to the fair? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll be there. Uh, we yeah. try to go at least one night and eat all the junk food and all the yummy things. I just go for the funnel cake. Ride the, yes, ride the rides. <laughs> just the funnel cake. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited. It's coming up. So yeah. uh, that just means it's summer in, in Bourbon County. So. Yep, yep. So we'll see you all over there. Awesome. See you next see month. See ya.